Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Next Gen, Hermia's Quarter Horse Mark I flies at Edwards AFB. Vertical Flight Society hosts 81st Annual Forum in Virginia Beach. And first successful piloted flight by Vertical's VX4 eVTOL. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Next Gen program, a weekly news program covering the next generation of flights, from electric power to vertical lift, uncrewed vehicles, and everything in between. Let's get into today's stories. Hermia's Quarter Horse Mark I flies at Edwards AFB. Hermias confirmed the flight of its Quarter Horse Mark I aircraft at the Air Force Test Center at Edwards AFB, a significant step in the company's pace of high mock and hypersonic aircraft development. Development of the Quarter Horse Mark I went from clean sheet to flight ready in just over a year, demonstrating its rapid pace and advancing the mission of Hermias to make hypersonic flight operational. The test campaign was focused on validating high-speed takeoff and landing a large, uncrewed aircraft. Its unique configuration is dictated by high-speed flight and makes basic operations like takeoff and landing more challenging than that of conventional aircraft. Data from the flight campaign has validated the aerodynamics, stability, and control. It also validated subsystems including propulsion, fuel systems, hydraulics, power, thermal management, avionics, software, telemetry, flight termination, and command and control. The team will incorporate the data, lessons learned, and performance results into the Quarter Horse Mark II, Hermes's next iteration. After the break, Williams International drops $1 billion on turbine engine plant. For over 30 years, the massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new Digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon. www.sportplane.com Are you ready to ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 remote pilot certificate, or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. Welcome back. Now for some shorter stories in our next Gen Minute. Williams International drops $1 billion on turbine engine plant. Williams International recently decided on a location for its new billion-dollar, million-square-foot turbine engine manufacturing facility. The investment is expected to create more than 330 jobs in northwest Florida. Williams began a multi-state search in 2023 in preparation for the construction of a new high-volume manufacturing facility. The hunt led it to the $3.2 million grant Governor DeSantis awarded Okaloosa County in 2022 under the Florida Job Growth Grant Fund. Marine Training Command Stands Up Drone Attack Team In early January 2025, the Commanding General of Training Command, Major General Anthony M. Henderson, and the Marine Corps Warfighting Laboratory, Brigadier General Simon M. Doran, established the Marine Corps Attack Drone Team to counter the proliferation of armed first-person view drone technology and tactics. The response in creating the MCADT comes after observing such technology and tactics in Eastern Europe, and as such emerging threats continue to evolve, the Marine Corps is prioritizing rapid readiness in kind by integrating FPV drone capabilities to enhance operational effectiveness across the fleet Marine Force. NBAA pushes members to weigh in on tariffs. NBAA urges its members and business aviation stakeholders to voice their opinions and concerns on a U.S. Department of Commerce investigation into the impacts of imports of commercial aircraft, engines, and parts on national security. Commerce Secretary Howard Lutnick opened the investigation under Section 232 of the Trade Expansion Act of 1962, addressing the potential impacts of imports to the nation's economy and national security. The department is taking public comments as part of its evaluation, with the deadline for comments set for June 3, 2025. Robinson, Delta Hawk, and Whisper Aero join Gamma. Gamma announced that Robinson Helicopter and Delta Hawk have joined the association as full members. 
Whisper Aero also joined as an associate member under Gamma's Electric Propulsion and Innovation Committee. The first new full-fledged member is Robinson Helicopter Company. Delta Hawk Engines is the second full member joining the EPIC initiative. Delta Hawk develops jet fuel piston engines and received FAA certification for its first engine in 2023. Whisper Aero is the new associate member of EPIC. It focuses on developing quiet, efficient, and clean electric propulsion systems. That's it for our next-gen minute. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Vertical Flight Society hosts 81st Annual Forum in Virginia Beach. The Vertical Flight Society held its 81st Annual Forum recently in Virginia Beach. VFS officials indicated that this year's three-day forum exceeded 1,000 attendees and represented some of the highest caliber of cutting-edge vertical flight experts and entrepreneurs from around the globe. According to officials, 262 technical papers were presented in conjunction with 60 invited speakers, 9 in-depth special sessions, and 66 exhibitors from industry, government, and academia. To cap off the event, VFS held a tour of nearby NASA Langley Research Center. According to officials, noticeably absent from this year's conference were nearly 200 past representatives from the FAA, NASA, and U.S. DOD. This lack of participation sparked concern among many at the forum, especially in light of some of the recent safety and technology shortcomings highlighted by the current administration as it relates to the country's aviation transportation system. Many expressed hope that federal restrictions preventing government aviation officials from attending such collaborative events would soon be lifted, allowing for broader engagement in future forums focused on safety and innovation. Looking ahead to the next major event for the Vertical Flight Society will be their 17th Annual Electric Aircraft Symposium, which is scheduled to take place in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, July 19th and 20th, prior to AirVenture. After these messages, first successful piloted flight by Vertical's VX4 eVTOL. Welcome back. First successful piloted flight by Vertical's VX4 eVTOL. Vertical Aerospace announced that its VX4 eVTOL performed its first successful winged flight with a pilot at the controls, marking the first piloted wingborne flight of a winged eVTOL in open European airspace. The flight, piloted by Chief Test Pilot Simon Davis, came on the heels of approval by the UK's Civil Aviation Authority. The aircraft took off from and landed on a runway at Cotswold Airport like a conventional aircraft with all lift generated by the wing. It performed as expected, demonstrating controlled flight. In addition, 30,000 in-flight data points and parameters were collected. Test pilot Davis said, quote, Taking the aircraft beyond the airfield and cruising over the Cotswolds for the first time was truly special and a career highlight for me. Our performance predictions were absolutely spot on, and the aircraft took off as a natural extension of all the ground tests and preparation that we've done. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.